Hey everybody, in today's video we're going to talk about how to use rules and power apps. They're simple, they're easy to do once you get the hang of them, and they can save you a lot of time. So let's get going. Uh, to start out, we're just going to put in a, let's do add icon. And then as you can see, there's properties, rules, advanced. We're going to go to rules and hit new rule. Then it's going to automatically generate you a name for your rule. So ours is going to be rule four. We can rename it to rule one. Sounds good. And with conditions, now you can type these in or you can make them up here. So if I want it, I can, it's always going to give you this option to do custom condition. And it's also going to start out with automatically inserting the control that you clicked on. So as you can see, there's green uh, shading over icon four. This control is an icon it's called icon four. So whenever I click on it, it's going to turn green and reference and put a little green box around what control it's talking about. So if I wanted, I can say I don't have to reference icon four. What we're going to do is I can say if essentially user, there we go, close parentheses. So this function is just going to say it's going to get different uh, properties from my user profile. So if I do user parentheses, email, full name, image, I'll do full name equals Ben Fetters, quotation marks and my name is Ben Fetter, so this is going to be true. Then you can add another condition or you can define an action. So we're going to click define action and it's going to take you to this action mode. I don't really know what it's called. Um, so it's going to give you this little yellow ribbon and now whatever I do is what's going to happen if this rule is true. So right now it's right here. I'm going to go to its color and just change it to green and maybe I'll drag it over here. So I'm going to hit done. So now it kind of made this action. So it says if the user dot full name equals Ben Fetters, which it does, it's going to turn green, it's going to turn its color. The X is now going to be set to 780, the Y is 132, which is different than what it was before. And I can do another action, I can do another condition, so it's pretty simple. But here's some other ideas that you want, what you want to do maybe. So we're going to close that. We're going to hit done. And we'll just delete that and delete that rule. So let's try doing something a little more complicated. I don't know why you'd ever do something like that. So let's do a text input. And we'll do a little check mark. So this one's going to be just a little bit different. So what we're going to do. So we're going to add a new rule, click on the check mark. We'll keep it at rule five, add a condition. And this time we're going to reference another control rather than the user or the control itself. We're going to reference the text input. So the text input is called left side right here. Text input three, oh, not two, three dot it's going to give us lots of different properties and we're going to choose text so if text input three dot text now it wants us to say you know if it equals you know what it, what do you want it to do the condition for so if it equals we'll put yes then it's going to define action so it's going to take us to this mode again this time we can make it a little bigger change it to green and hit done. So now it created kind of this, you know, it's changing the color, the height, the width, doing all these different things. And we will just hit done. So now we're going to hit play and go to our text input. So right now it's not doing anything because the text input isn't saying yes. So let's type in yes. So it gets a little bigger turns green, still click it. As soon as I click backspace, it's going to go back to normal. So it's 
pretty easy. It does it really quickly. You could set all these different properties. Like if I go to the properties of this and I go to its height, when you create a rule, it's going to create based on what your rule is. For example, when we made that rule, we changed its height. Now it's going to change and insert. The height is going to be this if statement. So you could go in and type this in. You could type if rule five, rule five is, here we go. Rule five is if the text input equals yes. So if text input three equals yes, then the width or the height is 99. If not, it's 64. So you could go and type all those things, but as you noticed, I changed like a bunch of different properties on there. I changed the height, the width, the color, I didn't change too many, but anyways, you can change lots of stuff, make it lots more simple. It saves you a ton of time and you don't have to keep retyping everything. So that's pretty easy. Um, the last thing I'll show you, just one more little demonstration. We'll just delete that guy. Okay? Let's insert, maybe you're doing a form, you know, whatever it is, we'll insert another text input. So let's say once you enter in something in this box, we want this one to become visible. So we're going to set this visibility by default. It's just going to be off. So it's not visible. Now we're going to go, oh, I'm going to select it again, go to rules and Gonna go click over here and click new rule, add a condition, and wow, that's kind of nice. So we could do not equal to equal to is not blank. So if I have something in there, then do this. If it is blank, stay like this. But we're kind of wanting to reference another control. So obviously, when you have different controls, it's gonna give you different options because you can't say if an icon. It's blank. It doesn't really work. So we're just going to do custom condition. And we want to reference the text input up above. So that's text input 3. So we're going to go over here. Text input 3. We should always rename these. Makes it a lot easier. Dot text. Actually, it is a little bit. So we're going to kind of do the same type of thing. We're going to do if is blank which is a special little function you know parentheses text input three close or dot text. and so if it is blank oh i should say it is not blank so to do not blank all right guys if you want to reverse the function and kind of say the opposite you're going to do shift one put an exclamation point so that's basically saying if text input three is not blank so if you have typed something in text input three then do this so we're going to define actions and click on that Turn its visibility to on, click done, and hit done. So there's something typed in there right now, so it's visible. So we're going to hit play, bring it back up. So there you have it. That's it. Rules are pretty simple. Um, it's nice to be able to manage all your different rules. If you click on this one, you can select down here, show rules for this control only. These are the only control, or the, these are the only rules we have, and they're full set for this control. But if I click here, I only have this rule. Click here, it's going to show me two. And then you can just delete them, and everything's set back to normal. So remember, rules make things easier and faster if you're doing something like formatting or changing uh, just anything. If you're going to put like an if statement or something like that there, it makes it lots faster. Um, but you can just type it in. So sometimes if it's a simple thing, I'll just put if or if or is blank or is not blank or whatever. 
I'll just type that in there. But if there's a lot that I kind of want to do and I don't really want to type in all the different statements and rules, like you saw, it automatically puts in those if statements for you. Um, this just saves you a ton of time. So that's my tips and what I want to talk about today. So if you haven't already, uh, subscribe or see some of my other videos. Um, I'm going to be putting out lots of different simple, easy videos so you guys can learn simple, easy stuff that I learned kind of just on my own. So I wanted to help you guys out with it. So thanks. Thanks for watching.